The next thing I want to talk about when using your phone as a camera is talking about framing when someone's on screen. There are three compositional principles to keep in mind. The first principle is called headroom. Headroom is the space between the top of someone's head and the top of the frame. Except for very wide shots, most shots leave little headroom between the top of the person's head and the top of the frame. Here are a series of examples of shots that don't work. Note when there's a lot of room above the head, how it looks odd and out of balance, whether in a close-up or a medium or even in a wide shot. Now see how this haircut is equally out of balance. Here are the same shots with proper headroom. Notice how the headroom is minimized, how the headroom is very similar between each of the shots, even in the wide shot. Either way, compare the two next to each other. So point your camera at someone, or even at yourself in the mirror, to do a brief practice. Get used to shooting this way using proper headroom. The second compositional principle is called lead room. When people are being interviewed, they're looking at someone off screen. Lead room is the space between the person, the direction they're looking, and the opposite edge of frame. Lead room gives space for the person on screen. When you give a person lead room, it creates a sense that the person on screen is looking in a certain direction. What happens when we don't frame your composition with lead room? It also feels oddly off balance. Objects generally are pointing in one direction. Lead room is a compositional principle that helps balance the frame, pointing your object in that direction. If you take a look at any documentary interviews or dramas where people are talking to each other, you'll see this principle play out in practice. It doesn't matter if the shot is a close-up or a wide shot. Unless the person is looking directly at the camera, the principle of lead room applies. However, just a note, instructional videos like this one, where the person is looking directly at the audience, directly into the camera as much as they can, you really don't need to worry about lead room. Like headroom, get used to using this principle all the time when you're shooting a video. If you got the first two compositional principles correct, you'll have already achieved the third one. It's a video and photography principle that says the screen is broken down into nine sections. This will create four points on the screen where the lines cross. These are the typical spots where the audience's eyes are drawn when framed properly. The rule of thirds will help create a very well-composed image. What's the audience going to be looking at when they're looking at a person? Their eyes. So when it comes to shooting someone being interviewed and they're talking to the interviewer off screen, put their eyes into one of the rules of thirds, also remembering the principles of headroom and lead room. The same goes when filming an object. Frame up your shot putting what you want your viewer to be looking at in one of those points of interest. And there you'll have a well-composed image. Are there ways of breaking these principles? Sure, but it's best to learn how to use the rules to your advantage before you start trying to break them. Let's do a quick review. Call it your checklist. Turn your phone to the side to landscape mode. Keep in mind the three basic shot sizes. A wide shows the entire person or thing, a medium is half that size, and a close-up, half again, shows us details, bringing us very close to the person or the thing. Remember the rule of thirds. It's a tool that helps you figure out how to compose your shots like a professional. Make sure you don't leave too much space above someone's head. Give some lead room when framing to create a well-balanced image. Here's an exercise for you to try. Take a series of photographs, thinking about the rule of thirds. Take photographs of the following. Close-up of a person, a medium shot of a different person, and a wide shot of yet another person. Reflect on the photos. Once you feel confident about framing shots with your phone, you've gone a long way to being prepared to make a video. In the next section, I want to talk some more about your camera settings.